Hey all, The Practitioner here. Um, I'm posting a video response, or more like a, a, a follow-up video, to my uh, video, Why Are We Even Testing Paranormal Claims? We Should Know They Are Fake. Um, this is in particular respond, this is in particular um, directly inspired by something Anonymous247N said on the comments. Um, this kind of stuck in my craw, well not really stuck in my craw a bit, but you know, it um, it, it was kind of a, uh, it was kind of something that it was almost like some people, uh, you know, even my fellow skeptics are missing the point of my argument. Um, uh, let me read you what he wrote, and then I'll, um, uh, kind of do my rebuttal. I've already posted a rebuttal in the comments of my previous video to him, but I wanted to post this in general for people to watch to get the idea of what the whole problem is here, um, with the skeptic challenges and anomalistic psychol- uh, with- uh, basically, when it comes to the pseudoscientific standing, um, as to how the skeptic challenges the um, anomalistic psychology and parapsychology are pretty well all in the same boat. But anyway, uh, let's get into uh, let's get into this a bit better. Um, Anonymous two four seven n writes, "Hey there. Well, I think the methods aren't that important here. There are no results." If someone would, uh, if there was really someone with parapsychic abilities, the world would go crazy about his or her achievements. I have heard of no one who did anything outstanding. So it doesn't matter if the scientific community doesn't like parapsychologists, the results um, matter and there are none. After all, someone would have gotten this one million dollars by now. Okay, dude, that's all. Now I've posted a response, a rather lengthy four or five comment response to him, but I thought I would get, um, I would continue this in here as to um, the difficulties. Um, I know I would cover. I promised I would cover a few of these in the background, but um, I'm going to cover a few here. Well, besides the lack of theory issue, which is one I expounded on le uh, greatly in the last video, there are a couple of major flaws um, which the entire scientific system, and I'm talking parapsychology, anomalistic psychology, which is the uh, skeptical uh, psychological um, research of paranormal experience and the psychological factors uh, 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 pertaining thereto, which also includes testing for paranormal abilities, um, the and also as well as skeptic challenges all have a couple of very big um, experimental flaws in them and uh, 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 um, and unfortunately um, well as uh, parapsychology and anomalistic psychology um, do try to a certain extent to remove some of these uh, uh, try to compensate a little bit for this by peer review it doesn't really have that much effect and the challenge is even worse off because of the fact they don't peer they don't uh, the challenges are worse off because of the fact that they do not uh, they haven't submitted their results f uh, to peer-reviewed scientific journals yet to even check to find out if their methodologies are say um, are are legit anyway um, but anyway that's neither here nor there the um, the the particular problems which are uh, uh, which de which definitely have been involved in all three are um, uh, the, uh, are particular are particularly twofold uh, one of which is the statistical techniques which have been used, uh, and this is uh, one of the, um, the statistical technique uh, argument has actually been one that's not leveled not just at parapsychology, but at psychology in general uh, and behavioral research, which is that the uh, the past uh, century or so, uh, some out of, of psychological research, has been using uh, conventional uh, inferential statistical techniques, you know, uh, t Z tests, T tests, uh, etc., to uh, measure effects um, in psychological format, but there's been more criticism recently, and they've been t uh, they, they've been some stronger um, uh, there's been some stronger research to suggest that previous research in a large chunk of areas may have in fact been flawed because Bayesian statistics uh, should have been um, that um, Bayesian statistics and effect size research should have been used more in uh, behavioral research than uh, conventional uh, null hypothesis testing techniques. So uh, incorporating base factors into, into statistical calculations, um, you know that sort of thing. The second major problem, however, and this is one leveled directly at para, um, this one is leveled uh, directly at uh, para, uh, parapsychology, anomalistic psychology, and the skeptics challenges, is um, is failing to take care of a very uh, sorry is is failing to take care of a very basic form of experimenter bias. Um, back in the 1950s, Robert Rosenthal, his uh, and his uh, his graduate student Fode. Um, but, uh, did some research on uh, empathy testing, uh, on, um, on testing um, whether people could actually determine the, um, uh, could actually determine the, um, the emotion of a person uh, in a photograph, you know, like just based on facial expressions or what have you. What, was, what they did, however, was they actually got a series of experimenters, um, you know, grad student experimenters, 
uh, and told them that they would be paid uh, that they would be paid for each successful replication they got from study to study, like physics uh, students are expected to get. And what they did was they randomized up the system, you know, double blinded, and they told one group of experimenters, uh, you know, one randomized group of experimenters, that the subjects would successfully be able to um, recognize the emo uh, recognize the emotion, and the other set would fail. Uh, you know, that their test uh, sorry, that their test subjects would fail to uh, recognize emotion. And what's interesting was that they did a, when they did a one tail test um, afterwards, they uh, they discovered that the um, uh, they discovered that the uh, that the experimenter expectancy effect uh, that there was a a very large effect in the predicted direction, i.e., there was a you know a major uh, there was a very major difference uh, you know that the um, the su uh, the subjects who were being tested by experimenters who thought that the subjects were going to that the hypo um, uh, the hypothesis that the subjects were going to succeed uh, they passed and the experimenters who believed their subjects would fail their subjects failed. Um, what does this have to do with parapsychology? The problem is, is that uh, this has been known, uh, by the way, as the experimenter observer effect. In short, there has been, um, uh, ever since Rosenthal's work and even replication studies afterwards, there's been plenty of evidence to demonstrate that in psychological studies and behavioral research, that a um, that what can happen is that a subject, an experimenter, uh, uh, particularly in psychological research, an experimenter can communicate their belief as to whether or not a subject will uh, pass or fail, uh, um, you know, will will succeed or fail at an experiment. They can communicate the hypothesis or the experimenter's belief through much the same body language as can communicate placebo or medicine group in a single-blinded medical study um, to the subject, and thus influence their behavior. Um, when being tested in a, in a scientific experiment. In parapsychology, um, you know, or in parapsychology or with skeptics challenges or with anomalistic psychology, this in particular is a very major problem because belief or skepticism of an experiment, uh, belief or skepticism of an ex uh, in an experiment could influence a subject's uh, performance uh, to statistically significant or to remain at chance levels if, and here's the if, the method with the methodology um, you know if the physical methodology is flawed like if the equipment's not set up right or if there's lack of uh, proper control of sensory leakage or stuff like that um, uh, or lack of randomization if any one of these um, if any one of these factors is even there in the slightest and there is a um, then the uh, the belief or skepticism of the experimenter could actually influence results the problem with this is that if um, if the experimenter observer effect is influencing subjects then there is no way to properly tell whether or not the methods used by either the skeptics or proponents are actually methodologically sound. So in short, the, uh, so in short because of this problem, um, because of this one very basic flaw which has not been taken controlled, uh, um, control, uh, which has not been controlled for, um, the results from the $1 million challenge or the skeptics challenges or the parapsychological studies from a century and a half or even the, the replication attempts by skeptics, none of those results mean anything. They are, you know, they are, the results are meaningless because the studies have not been properly controlled for. Um, one of the easiest ways to control for the, one of the easiest ways to control for this, and uh, even, uh, I even had a chat with Chris French on the phone about this, but one of the easiest ways that would be dealing with this is to simply communicate instructions to a neutral experimental assistant, uh, you know, a completely neutral experimental assistant, just communicate instructions uh, to give to the subjects for their, uh, for their, you know, for the task, uh, for the side task or what have you, send them those instructions by email, then talk to them directly after the study has been conducted, um, and have that neutral experimental assistant interact with the subjects only. This way, um, the, and, and have the experimenters, believer or skeptic, view the, uh, view the experiment from a closed circuit television camera after having set it up. This way, they can test the subjects, but not directly interact with them and thus not influence their performance. So even if they still get high statistically significant rates, you can then go back over the study methodology, find out if it was flawed and do a repeat. Um, or, and if it not, and it still gets a repeat, then we could know whether or not, um, or if, uh, if the experimenters were one step removed and we still found nothing, then we know for sure that there was, then we, you know, reasonable, then we, uh, and we still found no, uh, no results, then we know that there were no psi powers. Um, or if we found results, then we know that there were. I am a skeptic because there is no evidence to date. However, we have not, pro uh, however, what I will state is that because of these issues of lacking, uh, of dealing with proper, um, because we have not controlled for the experimenter observer effect, um, which is a form of ex and which is a basic form of experimenter bias, 
uh, because we've not controlled for that, and because we have not controlled, uh, you know, because we have not used Bayesian or other statistical methods, you know, which are properly sound, the results at present are moot.